coming up on The Overcoming Life with Jimmy Evans. We all have pain, we all have suffering, we all have issues that we go through daily, whether it's people who hurt our feelings, our husbands, our wives, our parents, but trusting God and trusting in His love is the most secure place you can be in. And I know that for myself now, because I do believe and I do know that God loves me, is the most secure feeling in the world that no matter what happens around us, no matter how people treat us, no matter if I've had a good day or a bad day, I can, I can depend on the love of, of God. If you would have known Karen 40 years ago, you would have walked up and in 30 seconds, you would have known this was a very insecure person. I mean, just the way she carried herself, she was just very shy, very insecure. But I dealt with my insecurities different. In fact, the more insecure I felt, the more macho I acted. And so if you walked up to me, if you walked up to Karen and you were kind of intimidating to her, she would just cow down and, and just go into, you know, kind of just a, uh, you know, a real shy type of a way. If you came to me and made me feel insecure, I'd shove my chest out at you and just stand and stare at you. But I was insecure on the outside. I was acting macho. Let me say this. You all deal with insecurities. We all deal with insecurities in our own ways, whether it's right or wrong, whether it's turning to God or turning to a substance, whether it's godly or not godly. I believe that every single individual feels insecure at times, and we deal with that, and it's either an opportunity for God or the devil. All of our insecurities, we're, we're going to deal with them in some way, right or wrong, and it's going to become an opportunity for God or the devil. Let me say this, you'll either live your life insecure, falsely secure, or secure in God. And the only true answer for insecurity is a personal relationship with God. You'll hear me say that through this entire message. That is the only answer. And the world does not have security in God. When the Bible says don't be conformed to this world, it's saying don't solve your problems the way the world solves problems. Let me say this. You know that I'm telling you the truth. The world finds security in money, right? Listen, money's important. God is essential. And the apostle Paul said, I have learned to be content in whatever manner I'm in, in need or in abundance. In other words, what Paul was saying is I'm secure regardless of how much money I've got in my pocket or don't have. When God is in our lives, we can be secure. The world finds security in appearance, in looks. It's, it's something that's, you know, it's unbelievable the, the level of importance this is placed. And if we're not careful as believers, we'll do the same thing. It's good to look good. It, it's good to look your best. That's an important thing. You know, that's, that's something I think that we would all want to do. But, but I want to tell you the truth. And this is just, I'm going to give you the bottom line. And don't constantly compare yourself to things. It's tormenting. And it just makes you feel all the more insecure. And again, I want to say, as believers, we should think differently than the world thinks. And we're all in this world, and we're all affected by that kind of thinking of putting my security in money, putting my security in my appearance, putting my security in my popularity, and things like that. The only way you will ever feel secure, truly secure, is in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, Psalm 91, where I ask you to turn there, this is the security chapter in the Bible. You know, like Hebrews 11 is the faith chapter. 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. There are certain chapters in the Bible that are well known for something. This is the security chapter. And if you want to live secure, this is a great chapter to go to and to, to meditate on and to, to uh, memorize, especially in times when you're feeling insecure or fearful. This is, we're going to read it, Psalm 91. And here's how it begins. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Well, let me stop right there and ask this question. Where is the secret place? Because the psalmist is saying here, if you dwell in the secret place of God, you'll live under the shelter of God. This is what it's saying. God will shelter you and make you secure if you abide, if you live in that secret place. Well, Matthew 6, 6 Jesus told us where the secret place is. He says, when you go into your room and close the door to pray, that's the secret place. And the God who sees you in that secret place will reward you openly. He who prays to God will come under his protective covering. That's what that's saying. 
He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow, the shelter of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I trust. This is the confession of a person who lives a secure life. It has to come out of your mouth. Listen to me. It says here, here in your secret place, you're going to go, you're, you're feeling insecure. You're, you're feeling you're feeling insecure about your looks. You're feeling insecure about your relationships. You're feeling insecure about your job. You're feeling insecure about whatever you're feeling insecure about. And so where are you going to turn? Because where you turn is your security. Where you turn, where you're feeling, when you're feeling insecure, that is your security. And we should turn to God. Okay, so it says here, I'm going to say, this is going to come out of my mouth in my prayer time. I say to you, God, you are my refuge and my fortress. I put my security in you. My trust is in you. It's going to come out of my mouth. I've got to say it with my mouth. And here's what I'm saying at the same time. I will not put my security in money. I will not put my security in my relationships and in people. I will not put my security in my appearance. All those things are good, but you're God and you're the only one who can give me true security. I'm going to say that with my mouth. I'm not just going to think it. It's my confession. And as all the other people in the world are running to their place of security, I go in my room, close the door, and that is my place of security. It is my personal relationship with God. And that's what this is saying right now. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Now listen to this. Now what we're going to read is every promise that God makes to a person who does that. They're awesome promises. I go into my prayer closet, I close the door. I'm in the secret place. I'm in the place of being sheltered by God. And I'm going to make my confession, God, you're my security in life. Here are the promises. Number four, verse 3, surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. That means your enemies that are trying to get you. And from the perilous pestilence, he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you will look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Anybody want to believe that for your life? That is a secure individual. God is saying, I'm going to protect you. I'm with you. I'll deliver you from everything. And you're going to trample down the serpent and the lion. You're not going to live your life in, in timidity and in fear and in insecurity. You're going to be a confident warrior for God. It's the opposite of insecurity. But our security is in God. And by the way, this is available regardless of how old you are, young you are, how much money you have, or how you look. Or how many people like you. Thank God. Thank God. And then here's God's. The, it begins with God, it ends with God's words. And here's what God says to those people who believe in him for their security. Verse 14, because he has set his love upon me. It's about a relationship. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Is that an awesome promise? It's your promise. It's your promise right now. If you will turn to God in prayer and believe him for security in life, and I'm not saying that money's not important. I'm not saying that relationships are not important. I'm not saying having a good job and even our appearance. I'm not saying it's unimportant. I'm saying those things are important. He is essential. And I'm saying if you have all of those things, you can still live a very insecure life because those things cannot bring us security. Only God can. Well, let me tell you several stories, beginning with Karen's. I told you about Karen being insecure. When we got married, Karen, uh, she was saved, but she didn't believe that God loved her, and, and she, it was hard for her to believe she was saved. She hated herself. She was full of self-hate. 
And uh, I would tell her how beautiful she was, but to her, she was fat, ugly, and stupid. That's the way she thought about herself. And she hated, she hated uh, herself, but she wanted to know God, but she didn't know that God loved her. But she made a decision when we got married that she would read the Bible every day. Here's a good verse of scripture just to jot down. Psalm 107, 20. Here's what it says. God sent his word to heal them and to deliver them from all of their destructions. Karen made a decision 40 years ago that she was going to read the Bible every day. Now, she didn't believe the loving parts of the Bible. She believed Leviticus. You know, she believed the, the law chapters of the Bible, the judgment chapters. But when she read about the love of God, she didn't believe it. But here's what my wife has done. I've never known a day in 40 years under any circumstances that my wife has not read the Bible every day. It's the first thing she does. And what has, see, so you don't read the Bible, the Bible reads you. Hebrews 4 says the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword. When the Word of God, the reason the Bible is a two edged sword is one edge is a scalpel that heals us, the other edge is a sword that slays the enemies of God. The Bible is the software that our hardware was originally designed to run on. And when you read the Bible, it reprograms your hardware to think so that you can live successfully. That's why Psalm 1 says, the person who meditates on the Bible will succeed in everything they do. When you read the Bible, it reprograms your software and it also has a virus killing program in it. <laughs> Literally, that's what happens when you read the Bible. Let me finish by talking one more story quickly, and this is the Apostle Paul. And Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, here's what he's saying. I went to heaven 14 years ago, and I don't know if I was in my body or out of my body, but I went to heaven and I saw things I can't even repeat. I, I saw things I can't even describe because it's indescribable. And he says, but because of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. Now, let me say this. God either causes or allows everything. God did not cause his thorn in the flesh, but he allowed it. And so when he got this thorn in the flesh, it could have been an eye problem because in Galatians 3, he's describing he was having problems with his eyes. I don't know what it was, but it, he hated it. And he went to God three times and he said, God, take this thing away. And God's response was, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Here are the three steps to dealing with insecurities. Number one is turn to God. Paul turned to God. Wherever you turn in times of insecurity, problems, fear, that is your security. Go to the secret place with God and make him your refuge and your fortress. Turn to him first. That's what Paul did. That's what we do to deal with insecurity. Number two, embrace your weakness. And I'm not saying that we never try to get better. I'm not saying that we should accept everything that comes into our lives Listen, listen to my magic wand theory. This, this is my magic wand theory. If, we, if, if you had a magic wand, if I handed you a magic wand right now and I said to you, you can wave this magic wand over your life, your body, your life, and you can change anything you want to change, okay? Here's what would happen. You would take that magic wand, you would wave it over yourself, and you would never need God again because you'd make yourself beautiful, rich, popular, powerful, Right? That's why the magic wands are not available in the foyer. God, the things that we feel bad about and make us feel insecure are why we need God. If we could change what we don't like about ourselves, we wouldn't need God anymore. God loves being a daddy. God loves being a shepherd. We're sheep. God made us sheep. God made us to where we are weak. We're weak people. We're weaker than we would want to admit. We need a savior. We need a shepherd. We need God. And the way the world thinks when they're in need is they're trying to look for something, a substance, a thing, something on them or in them to change the way that they think and to make them feel secure. And it doesn't work. The difference between the way the world thinks and we think is they run to something, we run to someone. What does that mean? When I turn my weakness to God, it becomes strength because God and me are a perfect team. I'm not that smart. He's a genius. Amen. I'm weak. He's powerful. I don't know where I'm going, and he has a, an eternal perspective. We're the perfect team. 
when I admit that I need him. I need God. I need God. I need God. I need him. And that's the confession that leads to strength. That's the confession that leads to security. But we can't find God until we admit our need for God. And then the third thing that we do is put faith in God's grace. And what that means is you don't have to deserve it. You don't have to deserve anything. My grace is sufficient for you, Paul. Listen, when you need God most, you deserve him the least. I I need him because I'm a mess, right? Anybody agree with that? I need him because I'm a mess. And what that means is because I'm a mess, I don't deserve him. You know what God says? Come jump in daddy's lap. I don't care how bad that diaper smells. Come on. You have grandkids, you know what I'm talking about. I've had near-death experiences over that stuff. (laughs) But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter because I love them. And they're my kids. We can't get our act together till we get in daddy's lap. And Daddy's lap is a lap of grace and love unconditionally. I changed my mind, overcome negative thoughts, and live a life of freedom and peace through this practical series by Jimmy Evans. For your gift of $55 or more, you'll receive the series on CD or audio download and Jimmy's book, When Life Hurts. For your gift of $90 or more, you'll receive the series on DVD or video download and the book. Discover how to always have a positive attitude, how to overcome worry and anxiety, and how to eliminate fear and find fulfillment. We have the ability to expose, to challenge, and to expel any thought that is in our minds right now that doesn't belong there. For your gift of any amount to support the overcoming life, we'll give you the teaching, I Changed My Mind About My Attitude, as an audio download. Happiness is a choice within your control. You can change your mind and experience breakthrough in every area of your life. I really was born shy. I think all of us are born a certain way. And so um, from the beginning of my life, I remember just being shy. I can remember my parents were very frustrated people because they were both very strong uh, dominant people. They were. They had a lot of self confidence. They, they were go getters. They were hard workers. They, you know, they're very uh, involved in their community. And so we were always, you know, put in a situation where we're around a lot of um, other people. And so it just increased my uh, insecurities just to be around all that because I didn't know how to deal with it. I was so insecure. I knew God was good. I knew God created the world and he must be so fabulous, but something must have happened on the way from my birth to where I was at that point that made me something that wasn't good. And so, um, I remember just, you know, going through that kind of a life and then just, uh, I, when I say hate y'all, I mean really hate. Um, I think that's the reason I so, love the the body of Christ and what the scriptures do for us is because there's such an opposite. I know what hate feels like. I know what it's like to live in that. And I don't want ever to go back to that. And to experience the love we experience now is so is so much the message that we want to get out. Um, and so I grew up, Jimmy and I started dating, and he was the first person that saw good in me. I mean, he he really did. He just, he loved me for who I was. I didn't understand why he thought I was beautiful. I never did. To this day, he knows. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. And so, and I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> and so, um, but he's he's been such a uh, inspiration to me of constantly saying good things about me. But it didn't help. And I knew that I had to get this this thing fixed in me some other way. And so I just began to, you know, seek God on my own, just talking to God and just begging him to change me. And Jimmy and I were having horrible fights. And this is when we were first married. And I remember just crying out to God and saying, God, you know, I can't live like this anymore. It's too painful. It hurts too much. And I um, opened, it was like, a, I just felt impressed to open my Bible. And at that point, I didn't know the Bible very well. And I opened it up and it, it fell open literally into Psalm 6. And it was David saying, God, please don't be mad at me. Please don't take your anger out on me. I just need you. And I, and it, he's talked about soaking his couch with tears and how much he just wanted the love of God to, to rescue him. And I remember I read that. And the second I saw that, I, I spent most of my nights going to sleep 
uh, crying because, you know, we would have these horrible fights and nothing was ever resolved. And so I, I read that and I was just like, Oh my gosh, God, you see, you understand. And the, but there's one thing I couldn't get uh, satisfaction in. I couldn't believe that God could like me or love me. It was like something in me just, I don't even, I can't explain it what, what it was, but I couldn't believe that he could really love me. But I was committed and I was determined I was going to know what that word of God said because I was embarrassed not to know. And so I started reading it. And so I began to read it. Jimmy started seeing a change in me. And so one of the biggest changes came because I really stayed in um, trying to be a good person and, and learning how to have behavior that was pleasing to God. And the more I read, the more I wanted to change. And I remember Jimmy and I had another big fight and he was like yelling at me and saying, you know, you disobedient little rebellious woman. And I, well, I wanted to think, are you kidding me? I know a lot more rebellious than me. And But I remember for the very first time just kind of standing up and thinking, hey, wait a second, I've been reading 1 Peter 3, and I think I'm being pretty nice. And, I, and, he, and it was like, that was when I kind of said, uh-uh, I'm not doing this anymore. And I just really sweetly said, walked out of the room, and that's when we had that big fight. But what I realized is God has started changing my heart. And um, as I began to just, you know, trust that the Lord has changed me and His Word had changed me, it was just like, um, it became the thing that really, you know, healed our marriage. And so, and so that's what Jimmy says, like even in the seminar, she says, you know, the Word of God came and He healed them. The Word of God is the most powerful thing you can put in your life. I can't explain it. I don't understand it. I just know it's the truth because I am a living testimony that every single day I still read this Word and it still jumps out of the page at me and it ministers to some area of my life like no, Jimmy can't even do this for me. And it's, it's, it's like God is, it's so powerful. And so if you're not reading the Word of God, I just, I'm just telling you, you need the truth in you because we're living in a world that doesn't know truth. And, and you have to know this for yourself because it's how you're going to survive in the days ahead. It's how you're going to hold your head up high when Jesus Christ comes back and you're not going to sh shrink back and you're not going to be fearful that he doesn't love you. You're not going to be fearful that you haven't done all the things you need to do because you're going to know what the word says and you're going to trust that. And that's one of the things that, you know, I told the Lord, I said, I really do want to know the love of God. I want to know that you love me. I don't want to question that. And also, the thing that the Lord really spoke to my heart about is there's there's a there's a beauty in love, but there's a, also a power in trusting Him, and we have to be able to trust God in every area of our life. And no matter what's going on, it's we all have pain, we all have suffering, we all have issues that we go through daily, whether it's people who hurt our feelings, our husbands, our wives, our parents. But trusting God and trusting in His love is the most secure place you can be in. And I know that for myself now, because I do believe and I do know that God loves me, is the most secure feeling in the world that no matter what happens around us, no matter how people treat us, no matter if I've had a good day or a bad day, I can, I can depend on the love of, of God. That no matter what I've done, He's going to keep on loving me and I'm secure in that love. Well, this program is on overcoming insecurity. Gosh, I, I don't know of anyone who hasn't been insecure about something. And some people are overwhelmingly insecure. And I can tell you this, if your security is not in God, you're going to be insecure. The only way to overcome insecurity is, first of all, just to embrace it. The Apostle Paul, I mean, good grief, the Apostle Paul was the most enlightened person spiritually on earth, except for Jesus Christ. He wrote most of the New Testament. Um, I mean, he had revelations that were just incredible, went to heaven, uh, saw heaven while he was still living on this earth, so on and so forth. But he had a weakness. He had a besetting weakness that was called his thorn in the flesh. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Well, what does that mean? That means we're all weak, whether we realize it or not. But when you turn that weakness toward God, it's a perfect fit. Anything you aren't, God is. You say, I'm not that smart. Well, he's a genius. So I'm not that strong. He's the mighty one of Israel. I, I'm not this. I'm not this. I'm not this. He is that. He is that. He is that. When we take our weakness and turn it toward God, our insecurity in us becomes security in him. The spies went into the promised land. They came out and they said, there are giants in the promised land and we're like grasshoppers compared to them. They looked at themselves and then looked at the problem and became insecure. Joshua and Caleb came out of the same promised land, 
saw the same giants and they said, God has removed their protection. They're going to be our prey. In other words, Joshua and Caleb didn't compare themselves to the giants. They compared the giants to God. See, if you're going to compare yourself with all your challenges and difficulties, welcome to an insecure life. But when you compare your issues to God's ability, welcome to a secure life, true security, not based on who I am, but based on who God is. You were created to be secure in God. And my encouragement to you today is overcome your insecurity by turning it to God. Live your life focused on Him with faith in Him, and you're going to be successful, and you're going to accomplish the destiny that God has for you. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time right here on The Overcoming Life. I changed my mind. Overcome negative thoughts and live a life of freedom and peace through this practical series by Jimmy Evans. For your gift of $55 or more, you'll receive the series on CD or audio download and Jimmy's book, When Life Hurts. For your gift of $90 or more, you'll receive the series on DVD or video download and the book. Discover how to always have a positive attitude, how to overcome worry and anxiety, and how to eliminate fear and find fulfillment. We have the ability to expose, to challenge, and to expel any thought that is in our minds right now that doesn't belong there. For your gift of any amount to support the overcoming life, we'll give you the teaching, I Changed My Mind About My Attitude, as an audio download. Happiness is a choice within your control. You can change your mind and experience breakthrough in every area of your life. Thank you for watching The Overcoming Life with Jimmy Evans.